Hello and welcome to a Vorian shipbuilding tutorial. The intro of this video will show you the speed time-lapse build of a basic ship and then I will explain everything step by step. This is shipbuilding 101, meaning that during this video you will learn how to build your first basic ship out of iron and titanium and set it up in such a way to make future upgrades much easier. What isn't going to be covered in this tutorial is more advanced shipbuilding options, materials and designs, which will be a subject of the next video tutorials about shipbuilding in Avorian on this channel. I have already made a video overview of this game in one of my previous videos, link to which you can see up here on the right and in the description below. For anyone new to my channel, my name is Peter and you should know that I do tutorials, how-to videos and guides on a number of games, new and old. And if you end up liking this video, don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Now let's get down to business. In Avorian, you can mine iron and titanium with your basic drone mining ship in the first sector where you start the game. Once you have mined several thousand iron and a few thousand titanium, then you can go into the build menu and start making your first ship. The titanium is necessary for making more advanced versions of basic modules like engines, thrusters and the generator, so that you will get more speed, maneuverability and power from the get-go. While you will use the iron for more mundane things like hull, armor, turret emplacements, flight recorder, docks, cargo hold and so on. Armor is quite expensive and takes up a large service area, so don't expect to cover your first ship in titanium plates all over unless you want to spend hours and hours of searching for titanium rich asteroids and mine them all. Now I will take you through this step by step and explain the important points. Each time you start building a new ship, you get to start off with just this one cube. My idea is to transform it using the transform lock option into crew quarters. From then on you use the iron framework to set up similar cubes around those crew quarters which are currently going to serve just to fill up your ship but later on using the transform block tool you will switch these cubes into crew quarters or cargo holds depending on what you need at that moment. This way you can easily switch up whatever you need in the ship because you already have set up space for it and the iron framework is just saving that space for you. What you always need in a ship is the cargo hold and you should add several different ones because getting hit and getting that piece blown up is something that might cost you dearly. That is why separating your cargo holds into pieces is a much better idea. You also need the flight recorder but you don't need to spend a lot of resources on it so you can keep it small. Up to now I have only been using iron as the material because these pieces are going to be inside the ship and also because making them out of any stronger material won't really give you any benefits, it will only be more expensive. But now when I start making pieces which are going to be very efficient and effective if they are made out of higher quality materials. That is why I'm now using titanium for the gyro array. You need this piece of equipment in order to increase your rotational speed alongside with the thrusters which come on later. Once again I'm using the titanium as the material, this time for the energy containers because I want them to be higher quality and hold more energy. You need this energy because every time you're using your afterburners for example, you're using up stored energy. After this comes the most important part, your generator. You need a very large generator with a large capacity because you will be placing a lot of devices and weapons onto your ship and all of these require power. And if you want to use the aforementioned afterburners, you need something to actually fill all those energy containers so that you can use that energy when you need it. I would want to use a more advanced material than iron for this next piece of equipment, the inertial dampener, but currently it is not possible to make it out of titanium. And because we are building this ship just out of titanium and iron, we have to go back to iron when building this piece. It is a very important piece of your ship because it will help you whenever you are trying to maneuver in space. Now as I said in the intro, titanium is really expensive and weighs a lot. That is why I am making my armor out of iron and I am using tin sheets as otherwise my ship would weigh a lot and it would require even more powerful engines, even bigger generators and that would all require a lot more energy. If you want you can make thicker armor or even make two plates of armor but do note that this will increase your weight Increasing your weight will require more energy for your engines and more energy for your engines requires a more powerful generator and that in turn requires even more resources. So you always have to think about what you are going to be building later on rather than going for the most expensive and heaviest materials and then ending up with not enough energy to actually move your heavy ship. Everything you make on the outside of the ship should be armor plates especially if you are going to attach anything to them. This is why I'm using iron currently, but later on, when I have more resources, I can go over to titanium armor. But like I said, you only should build titanium armor where you need it if you have the power for it. 
Once you have a lot of titanium and a lot of cash, then you can go for a straight out titanium build. Now once again, I'm using titanium because I'm building the engines and the stronger material it is, the stronger the engines are and the more performance can you get out of them. One additional note is that you should try and make engines out of several pieces, that way if one of the pieces is shot out, you can still drive. If your engine is made out of a single large piece, it is going to have a large HP pool, but it's also going to be your weak spot. Naturally, engines go on the back of the ship, and then after this you can do some coloring depending on how you want your ship to look like. One thing that you need once you fix your engines is more surface area. The surface area is necessary because you want to have somewhere to put your thrusters on. There are two types of thrusters that you can put in a Warion, the directional thrusters and the normal thrusters. The difference between them, the regular thrusters, have thrusters on each side of the equipment, except the side which is attached to your ship, meaning that you get a lot more thrusters per piece of equipment, but that doesn't mean that you can always use them. For example, as you saw, I placed my directional thrusters next to my engines, but they were blocked on the upper and bottom sides, meaning that only the directional thrusters had any meaning being placed there. And the most important thing about the thrusters is that you have to place them on the edges of your ship, meaning that that way they will have the most impact on its mass. The closer you put your thrusters to the center of the mass for your ship, the less effect they will have on your ship and its handling. So you must try to place them strategically wherever they are going to be able to do their job the best. Once you're done with the thrusters, it's time to place the third base. These you should try and place so that you can cover any side of your ship depending on where the attacker is coming from. This is one of the reasons why the ship is flat and facing forward thin so that the enemy doesn't have a lot of surface area to target, because most of the attacks happen head on, especially if you are the one on the offense. You should also try to keep your turrets away from the important parts of your ship like the engines and your generator because that way if somebody tries to disable them they won't be able to accidentally shoot your engines and the generator all at the same time. Once you finish your ship it is very important to get personnel for all these pieces. You'll need gunners, mechanics, engineers and probably a sergeant to keep them in line. These you should find at your nearest star base and only then will your ship be fully operational. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below and don't forget to hit that like button if you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more.